All right, so we're continuing on uh, in the third section on uh, bargaining at the table, and uh, we're now approaching um, the end of end of the bargaining session, final offers, and uh, the, the the first slide here is intended to kind of deal with the environment uh, that that is there present that I see all the time after we've had a long bargaining session and. Uh, and we're coming up to short strokes and, and uh, we're trying to get the deal done. And it's, uh, I think probably you know that, but I see it very plainly. It's, it's, a, it's a tense time. Uh, it's a time when you have to be very focused uh, and very careful. Um, I see so much information given away at the very end. Um, it's subtle information, but as a mediator, um, I, I can see it. And, and uh, people let their guard down. Um, they get relaxed if they, if they think they're beating their uh, their uh, resistance point. They're happy and, and it sort of is there, uh, um, or they're they're not watching at, at key moments. They're not remaining focused because remaining focused opportunities are are everywhere when it comes to uh, negotiating bargaining, and you really have to seize them. So I'm just saying, pay attention. Don't give anything away. Be patient. Uh, that's the other thing. It's hard sometimes. You know, you're very happy or you're very anxious. Um, because there's there's all sorts of all sorts of emotions. I'm saying be prepared to deal with the emotions. And the, the, the whole gamut is there. People will be anxious, unhappy, depressed, elated, uh, and and at the same time, there's going to be important ones. There, things crumble at that moment. I've seen. I guess I've talked about the the, the areas where I see the, the the biggest the biggest losses of all are on. Um, uh, we've already indicated people are coming in with the wrong wrong um, mindset. Uh, People getting um, uh, taken on the opening offers uh, because they haven't really got it quite right, and and the third one is crumbling at the at the end uh, where they've there's obviously been an out of sync situation between the lawyer and uh, and the client and uh, there's a, and and they you know they want to get it done and they crumble and, and that's uh, that's what's happening, and on the other end there's last minute doubts you think you got it and you see them running and they don't want to really do it so there's all those emotions you have to deal with and of course then there's the last minute. Things the other lawyers, the other side will do to you, and, and the most often common one is the is an add-on. You think you've got it, and they want to they, they want to add something to it, uh, to the deal that you thought you were working out. A mediator should stop that. But I've given you a label. <laughs> You'll see it's a hard hardball tactic, really, uh, and a lot of nitpicking, uh, a lot of nitpicking, uh, which isn't necessarily bad uh, in terms of in, in terms of making sure we understand the deal, but nitpicking on little things that you thought were you know, settled and, and really. Uh, there. So I'm just saying it's a tense time, it's an interesting time, uh, and uh, recognize that, that this is where the rubber meets the road and you know it's uh, everything there, the flag should be up. Now let's talk about final offers. You, you mustn't say something's a final offer um, unless you mean it. That's, that's my view, and particularly for lawyers. Always leave yourself some, some wriggle, wriggle room, and there is wriggle room in any event. Wiggle room or wiggle room? I'm not sure. I think it should be wiggle room. Um, but um, there's ethical and there's reputational issues, and I've seen I've seen things going uh, offers, subsequent offers up to six times after somebody said it was a final offer. So you can imagine. Eh? Um, but having said that, I'm, uh, you shouldn't believe it's a final offer, and you and you should take it in your stride and, and deal with the fact that yes, we, we, we can get around final offers even. Uh, the other thing, the other ethical issue that I'm concerned about is making a final offer but not labeling it. People are careful. Is it a final offer? If it is a final offer, they know what they're dealing with. If they don't think it's a final offer, the concept is that there's there's more coming. All right, and if you don't say it, uh, to a certain extent, you'll bring out uh, an offer back from the other side, which they wouldn't have given if they'd known it was a final offer, or they would have done it in a, in, con in, in a circumstances where they would have done it differently. Um, and why it's important in, in step in the process bargaining? Some people think, ah, if I can get them to this number next time when we go to the next step, that's the starting point. There's ways of dealing with that. My own view is you should never, never um, be allowed to use a number uh, that's previously used in in, um, in in a session as you go forward into a settlement conference, particularly a settlement conference, because the settlement judge or master may may sort of focus on that. Um, I think it's okay from uh, a mediator to, uh, I mean, uh, when you're talking with yourselves to the mediator, I always ask where you are. I think that's okay. But you can set rules, and in a formal process like a mediation, you can set rules, or you can get across to the idea that uh, get across the idea that this is you know this is just for this case, and, and it's and in fact it's one of the ways you get things settled is you say now we're not going to change going into the future because this is as good as you're going to get, and you'll see that in my in my uh, 
uh, uh, simulated uh, opening, this is what I, what I say to make sure that they understand they're not, it's not going to get any better. Anyway, and finally, is it real? Um, final offers. The reality is final offers are often made <laughs> with step in the process, and when you have other steps in the future, it's today's final offer. That's one of the things that you have to bear in mind, and it's one of the outs we have, as you'll see, getting around impasse. Uh, the other thing is the absent decision maker. Uh, there's authority levels. It's, it's my final offer. It's my authority. And, uh, and, and so the, to a certain extent, you've got to recognize that there's, it's not really a final offer. It's, it's this person who's there. final offer. We're going to deal with authority in, in, uh, in the hardball area. It's not really hardball, but I think it's something that uh, fits there, kind of. Um, so how do we shore up final offers? We've got lots of ways of doing it. Um, the substantial concession, so you've been going along and then suddenly they jump, you know, make a 20% jump in, in, the, in the final offer. So instead of going down, uh, you know, it, it, it descending the way I, we're, we're supposed to do concession bargaining, the last one is the biggest one of them all, or a major concession. And they're trying to get across, this is serious, this is all we've got, the, 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 the cupboard's bare. And in reality, what it means, they've been bluffing, of course, all along, and they've had lots, of, lots to use. So anyway, um, but it's still what everybody does. Uh, authority, we've already talked about authority and, and personalizing. We have had to go get special authority for you and because your case is special. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, split the difference. The concept there is, hey, okay, I think what we want to do is be fair and reasonable. Now, fair and reasonable, as we know, is negotiation speak. But the reality is if two sides have been doing moderate, uh, moderate concessions back and forth, in fact, they're not even into final offers, uh, kind of the, the fair, it is a fair and reasonable uh, way, and it's a good way to describe it. So, but if it's a real, real hard bargaining, uh, there's nothing fair and reasonable about it. Um, assume the settlement uh, so that you write it up, all right? You write it up, and uh, you, uh, the idea is you, you, well, you couldn't possibly not accept this. Um, sweeteners, uh, an even better deal, uh, which is a good way of doing it. And a choice of offers, you decide. Uh, you know, it's it's can if, if there is a choice of offers, it's it, it can be useful. Usually, you find there's no difference between them at all. Uh, there's some conduct, retiming. Uh, you know, this is a hard decision. I've already talked about people taking a lot of time, and maybe they're taking extra time to try to convey to you that we really had to fight to get this. So this is really our final offer. And then there's the deadlines when you set the deadlines, and basically this is the scarcity principle. You're trying to see uh, something vanishing, and, and and you better grab it before it goes. And it's an influencing, poor influencing. And uh, there's other ones, uh, the best and final offer, framing things we talk about, other scarcities, how you, how you frame gains, how you frame costs, threats, etc. So uh, there's lots of things that you can do to shore up a final offer. On the other hand, what I'm suggesting is if you're into this game, you should be reading, you should be sending and reading some of the signals. So the best and final offer, we've already talked about that, best possible deal. Hey, that's what, that's what I like, that's what I'm after. And the final offer is the, the scarcity of the principle applied to it. Um, take it or leave it, um, well, th that's kind of, we're frustrated with this whole process. I mean, you take it or leave it, that's what they're trying to convey there. And you can convey that same way. Uh, alternatives are, are going to be very unpleasant, that's the threat, uh, all right? So that uh, they're asking you to look at the, the, the idea of the no deal. The bottom one's my client. It's a bit of a, something that uh, younger lawyers may not recognize, but you know we have to do what our clients ask us to do as long as it's not unethical. Uh, but sometimes we disagree with what our clients are doing. Uh, if a lawyer, uh, particularly a senior lawyer, I think, is saying my client, my client, my client a lot, it usually means that th there may be some dissension there in the ranks, and they're kind of disavowing themselves from the uh, from their client. Th they may even admit it in a mediator caucus, uh, and even a caucus with other lawyer, you shouldn't do that. That's obviously a breach of your, um, of your, of your relation, to your, your, your duty to your clients. But you can read it sometimes yourself, uh, where they're, um, they're entitled to say my client, and, and what it means is there's dissension in the ranks, and there may be something, an opportunity for you to work with, and that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about, stay focused and see what, see what everybody's saying, and try to read between the lines, because it's very important. So how do we respond to a final offer? Um, you know, it's, um, we can ignore it. <laughs> Lots of people do, you just plow ahead, and, and it's as good a way as any, quite frankly. You can do the walk bluff and, uh, you know, getting all the mediator, no, no, don't go. Um, my, my own recommendation is used to diplomacy. When somebody says it's a final offer, hey, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to get their egos involved, their reputations. I mean, you're asking them basically to go behind their final offer, and in some cases, you know, it's, they're not going to do it. So that, uh, in any event, I think diplomacy is the, the best one, and, and you know, say it's a, the, the, we recognize it's a final offer. It's a very good basis uh, for, for, for for further negotiations, but it just doesn't meet our needs. Blah blah blah. 
Uh, and then um, there's this uh, the, the debate, the, the, the today idea that, um, you know, okay, I understand, but we'd like you to consider uh, going forward, because we're going to make an offer, and we think it's a fair offer uh, for you to consider and take away and, and think on. And that's used a lot. And what happens is not only do they think on it, not, not in the future, but they'll think on it right away, and, and you'll get a deal. Uh, because there's something... I mean, final offers basically reflect, reflect resistance points. And, and the reality is that there's something really concrete and solid in front of you. And this is done. And the finality that's gone, uh, I know it was a final offer, but gee, uh, I think I'm going to jump on it. Uh, so that's that. And, and, um, and I guess uh, the other reality is that uh, if it's close to the end, if there's a trial looming there, let me tell you um, uh, that uh, those resistance points, they just seem to move magically. Uh, so... Uh, just uh, sort of observations of the mediators been at it for a long time. So how do we get over real impasse? I, I've sort of had two categories here, face-to-face -face techniques, which are ones that you can use as a lawyer. Um, you don't necessarily need the third party in there, the neutral third party, and these are the ones that are traditionally uh, listed in some of the texts. You go through kind of a routine. You list all the reasons for agreeing. You list all your concessions. Look how far we've come. Then you sort of get into it, anything we haven't agreed upon, any objections to our offer. And, and, and what you try to do is you try to do it in such a way, you trivialize it, you use framing exercises, there's ways of, ways of, of, of doing that without you know, really getting under people's skin. And then, of course, you review the consequences of the no deal. No deal, that's their, that's their leverage. That's what your, your leverage is, why they want, why they want the deal. And, and that's where you're, uh, you're going to talk about it about yourself, but really you're going to say, look at the consequences of the no deal, because that gets them focusing. On, on the negatives of, of, of not going ahead. And you write it up with a sweetener and you put a choice one in there. So these are things that you can do yourself, all right? No reason not to. And you can use that at impasse anywhere. Uh, the mediator techniques, well, you know, it depends. Um, first of all, you're going to see in the next session when I do it, that, that you've got to really nail your mediator rules. And the mediator rules, is, they shouldn't be influencing. Uh, I used to influence at the start I, I, because, hey, I thought that was my job. It's not my job. Uh, I've come to recognize that I'm not there to influence. I'm not. I have to be neutral. I have to be impartial, and I'm not going to be uh, influencing. Y you can use me as your conduit because remember, I've asked you to sort of what do you want me to convey. You can give me a whole speech if you want, and I will convey it if I'm the person doing it. It's better for you if you can get in there and do it yourself. But the the reality is uh, that I'm not there. I can help frame things a little bit in terms of offers and that kind of stuff that I think will sell. But I see it as a as a common interest idea, but not something that uh, you know that really uh, is giving anybody an, an advantage because people want to get the thing done, and I'm just helping out a little bit. Um, certainly, we go through an analysis of causes, like tangible and intangible, and I'll tell you we're better on the intangibles because we can get close to people, and we can deal with intangibles. Intangibles are like they're not. I mean, they're real. Don't get me wrong. They're, but it's it, it's a sort of thing that has to be overcome. You, you, an intangible will really stop a deal, whereas money and things like that, we can, we can always work around them. Uh, but the intangibles are the killers. They're having to do with personality, egos, identity, um, precedence, how people are seeing the whole thing. And we've, we've got we've to get at those, and we're better at that. We're better at that, and we will deal with them, openly talking to the people to a certain extent. And it's, it's because uh, we think intangibles are things that we, we should be able to get away. Mediator meeting with the lawyers, we'll do that all the time. Um, it's just a, you know, it's a good form to, to get going. And then finally, um, some of us, uh, some people will ask us to offer our opinion on you know, how outcomes, risks, so what do you suggest in terms of what do you think, what do you think is the best way to get this done, Peter, et cetera, et cetera. And um, sometimes we'll do it even without an invitation. I try not to, uh, but when I think that, ah, oh, this really should be settled, this is a case that should be settled, uh, I'm going to get engaged, I'm sorry, a little bit, and I say, hey, guys, you want me to... Want me to sort of give you my views a little bit on this? And, you know, asking it openly, um, I mean, really I should do it in private, but uh, asking it openly to a certain extent will show uh, maybe <laughs> who doesn't want to hear from me <laughs> is uh, kind of a dirty question, so i got to be careful. And then we get into the double blind, uh, which uh, good good mediator tactics. Uh, double blind is where basically parties either make offers uh, to me, uh, which I keep secret, or I make a, a, an, I make a, a suggestion as to what would be a, a, good, a good settlement offer for, for, for both sides, and I get back from them responses that are, that are secret. And why we say it's the blind is that um, the person who um, makes the offer that's a good offer that's not accepted 
um, uh, to a certain extent, uh, they know their offer wasn't accepted, so they have that information. Uh, the other side uh, sees that it, you know, the deal didn't go through, doesn't know what happened, so the, to a certain extent, uh, you're, you're protected. Um, and uh, it's the same with the, 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 the mediators. A number one put out, put out a number uh, to folks. Uh, it's the same idea. If somebody accepts it and the other doesn't, the, the advantage is supposed to go to the side uh, of the people uh, who have made the offer because to a certain extent they know what the other side is doing. The problem with it, once again, is that it's a way of reinforcing, um, it's a way of reinforcing final offers if you're going forward. It's great if you're at the end of the road, but if there's a step in the process and you want to give real finality to your final offer, you just refuse it. And the other side says, you know, gee, they, it's they clear that you know, they're, uh, they're not going to accept this either, so I'm going to have to go even farther down the line to get there. So, once again, it's like, uh, you know, there's a, there's a strategy and a tactic to everything, and people have been through it, they have to figure that out. Um, one thing, uh, when parties' offers are made, um, often what we do is we have a you know, a range. So if it's within ten thousand dollars, we'll split the middle. If you actually go over, we'll still split the middle. But the idea is you split the middle. So, so it gives a certain range, and depending on you know how much is involved, that, those, those, that range can be quite large. I think I've gone as twenty uh, twenty five thousand, thirty thousand dollars, lot of lot of dollars. The thing about mediators' numbers, um, you got to watch it in the timing. The mediator has to make sure that that I'm going to go and collect your answer in five minutes, and you got to be ready because if you don't, once again. There's a little bit of, uh, if a mediator's put out a number and, and one side sort of give, gives it back right away and the other side uh, you know, is, is fumbling, well then what it means that the other side is you're sort of, and it's a true signal, they're having problems which means that they're, you know, that they're probably, uh, uh, they're probably rethinking seriously about it. And uh, for uh, the three times, it's just the idea if uh, you want to make an offer, you keep on going. I, I can't see any real advantage on it. Uh, all it does is, is allow people to move farther along uh, and to get committed. And, and the whole idea, though, is, is this: is that to a certain extent, if people have said, "This is a, you know, I'm prepared to go this far," uh, and uh, they've they've got themselves, and if they really are kind of having resistance points, difficulties, if you really are in a real impasse, and people are engaging in this process, um, to a certain extent, you've got them over the hump that they're they are prepared to engage in it, which means it was probably uh, a resistance point for today, or. And, and not for the not for the long long run, but you've got them going along. You've got them, and they've got a new numbers, and they've got commitment. So that it does move the process along in the sense that uh, if we're trying to encourage settlement, it, it's probably better if they do in, in engage in these processes because uh, it'll lead to a, a settlement. But the question is, you know, is it in, uh, you know who's claimed the most value in a competitive bargaining situation? Um, so I think that um, probably um, what's left with closing the deal, I don't have a lot to say, you always be closing, just emphasize that. You want to go uh, do internet, uh, Google Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross and go to the, the YouTube thing on it uh, if you can get over the bad language and the homophobic uh, <laughs> remarks that are made there. It's, uh, it's something that emphasizes closing. Uh, obviously you should write it up. Uh, I think you should write it up um, unless it's very simple and you should work from your notes and make sure you got all the things. Um, once again, going back, the key representation idea. Put it in there if you uh, if you're relying on it, because some people will say things and they won't they won't be in the written agreement, and uh, you know, uh, so that uh, it's it's that uh, inducement and make sure it's there. One of the points is you, you try to build commitment into it to a certain extent. Penalty clauses, um, maybe maybe not, but certainly uh, at the table, uh, I certainly want the the handshake at the end. That, you know, we're agreed, and I say we're agreed. We're going to go and put this thing in. In practice now, and I realize there may be some parts of it that are, and if you have issues, come back to me and I'll we'll work them out with you for sure. Uh, but you want that commitment, and you know, we all agree we're going to try to do our best, and if you can put it in writing, even better. So, uh, I think this is kind of the end of uh, section three. Thank goodness it's a long one. Thank you for bearing with me on that. Uh, the takeaway well, there's a lot of things to know about at the table, and you should have that. You should know all what we talked about here. There. There's a repertoire of Kind of options that should be there that you want to be able to pick on and a good you know use and, and bring forward from you know rarely just maybe once every year you may say hey yeah this is where I'm going there but you should know them all and you should be very at ease with them and uh, sort of you know I think that's really what it is effective bargainers must have the knowledge and, and have familiarity with uh, some of these things the tactics and strategies that we talked about and that knowledge so I hope it's helped and uh, from here we're going to go on to the issue issues of ethical uh, ethical problems that uh, lawyers and bargainers, but certainly lawyers, face. And we're going to deal with hardball tactics and uh, some of the defenses to hardball tactics. 
So we'll see you in the next video.